Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about parametric equations for line segments. We're gonna have uh, a point we start at and a point we actually stop at, not just two points that we pass through. So to do that, we need to kind of work through the logic of what's happening. So to begin with, you're gonna need the two points, right? And they are going to be a starting point, a stopping point, and the order matters. So it's like we're dealing with vectors. So the stopping point is really important, the starting is really important. You can't just flip them arbitrarily. So that's to begin with. We're also gonna to need to know um, the time involved. So that's gonna be a start time and an end time. And we wanna think of that as an interval. So A is less than or equal to T is less than or equal to B, for example. Once we know these things, we can start to calculate our deltas. So there's three deltas that we need to calculate. So we are gonna find um, delta X, which are changing X, delta Y, and also delta T. So three different deltas that we're gonna use. And we're gonna use those to calculate the rates of change for x and y. So we're going to find two different rates using these three different deltas. So the rates that we're going to find are for x, it's going to be change in x position over change in time, so delta x over delta t. And then for y, it's change in y position over time, so delta y over delta t. Um, okay, so once we have the rates, we can actually write the equations. It looks a lot like point slope form, at least in my mind. Um, but it's point slope form for each of x and y. So it's a little bit separate. So our equations, uh, you put them together with this brace. So they kind of look like a system of equations because they're related to each other. And for x, we're gonna start our initial x value, which I'm just gonna call x sub zero. It's the x coordinate of the starting point. And then plus the rate of change for x, which is delta x over delta t. And then this is actually the trickiest part because we're starting at um, the time A, right? We're not necessarily starting at zero. So what we do is we multiply by the quantity T minus A so that when I substitute A, T minus A is zero, and then I'm just getting X sub zero, which is what I want to happen when the time is equal to A. So that's our X coordinate. That's how we can determine it at any different time. And then we do the same thing for Y. So Y is gonna be Y sub zero, the Y coordinate of the initial point, plus the change in y over time, right? So that's your y rate, so delta y over delta t, and then times the quantity t minus a. So that quantity will be the same for both the x and the y coordinate, um, which is convenient. And then we also need to tell somebody uh, where do we start and where do we stop, so we just put down our inequality here. All right, so that's kind of a generic version of it. It has a constant um, rate of change for x and a constant rate of change for y. We sort of need that until we learn a lot of calculus and then we can have things be a lot more interesting. Um, I should note that um, it's almost always the case that t is between zero and one because usually you just have a starting point and a stopping point and you wanna just get from one to the other and there's no additional requirements. So you just calculate delta x and assume that the time is one and then you'll always go from zero to one. So that's really common. That makes your equations simpler. They look like this because delta t is one and you're going from zero to one. So they actually simplify down quite a bit. All right, we're gonna do two examples of the less simple version because that's what you should always practice. So let's take a look. So we wanna go from the point three, six to the point seven, negative five. We want it to take 15 seconds. The unit of time doesn't really matter here, to be honest, um, but I'm just using seconds. So I'm gonna calculate my three deltas based on this info. So delta x is gonna be seven minus three, which is four. Uh, delta y, so it's uh, the stop minus the start, so negative five minus six, which is negative 11. And then delta t, since it takes 15 seconds, I know that delta t is just gonna be 15. Um, what I kinda don't know, it doesn't tell me in the problem, like where should I start and where should I stop? Since it doesn't tell me that, I'm gonna assume that t starts at zero. And then if it starts at zero and takes 15 seconds, it must go till 15. So that's an assumption that I'm making, but there's nothing in the problem that says I can't do that. So that's what I'm gonna do. And now we just write our equations. All right, so X is gonna be equal to uh, our starting, our initial point, it has an X coordinate of three. So we're looking at three, six. So three is our initial X plus um, the rate. So that's gonna be delta X over delta T, so four over 15. And then times the quantity um, well, if I want to do a quantity here, but since uh, a is equal to, it should be the quantity t minus zero, but I'm not going to write that because that's like a little weird. So I'm just going to write times t. And then do the same thing for y. So the initial y value is six. Uh, the rate for y is going to be uh, change in y over change in t. So delta y over delta t is negative 11 over 15. 
I'm just gonna write plus the quantity negative 11 over 15. Obviously you could write just minus 11 over 15. I don't know why I didn't do that. And then times t again. And now I have to say what my t bounds are so I can go from zero to 15. All right, so that's one example. I'm gonna take basically the same problem um, and just change it up a tiny little bit. So we're gonna have the same initial point, same terminal point, but in this case, we're gonna go from t equals six to t equals 21. So it's a little bit different. And all of our deltas are gonna be the same. So this is really, it's basically the same as above, um, but there's gonna be one little difference. So delta x again is gonna be seven minus three, which is four. Delta y is gonna be negative five minus six, which is negative 11. And then delta t, we actually have to calculate in this case. So it's gonna be 21 minus six, which works out to 15. Um, so it's basically the same, but for t, we're going from six to 21. So that's gonna change our equations a little bit. So let's write our equations. All right, so for x, our initial x value is three. Um, now we're gonna add change in x over change in time. So delta x over delta t is four over 15. So plus four over 15. Now this time it's really important. I have to multiply by the quantity t minus six. And that's because we're going from six to 21. So quantity t minus six, that means when t is equal to six, I will substitute six, get six minus six is zero, and I'll end up at x equals three, so it's working for x. And then do the same for y, the initial y is six, plus any delta y over delta t, so negative 11 over 15. And then the quantity t minus six. And again, if I substitute six for t, that zeroes out and I just get six, which is what I should get. Um, because that's my initial point. But then I have to stipulate that t is between six and 21. All right, so that's two different examples of writing equations for line segments. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.